while since we did a slip yoke eliminator kit install in a Jeep transfer case. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're going to go over a couple of reasons why. As the suspension cycles, the distance between here and the axle will actually change. So to account for that, the factory installs a slip yoke at the back of the transfer case. The problem is if you break a U-joint and need to remove the shaft, we could lose all the fluid, leaving you stranded on the side of the trail. So we're going to upgrade to a fixed yoke output, and that'll move all the slip travel to the drive shaft. And the other reason is the fixed yoke output is actually shorter, allowing us to change to a longer drive shaft, which is especially beneficial to short wheelbase rigs like Wranglers. We're also going to upgrade to a CV style drive shaft, which will completely eliminate driveline vibrations even at taller lift heights. Start the disassembly of the transfer case by removing the retainer and the speedometer drive gear. Follow that with the removal of the front output yoke. If you don't have an impact gun, you can use a pair of channel locks and a breaker bar. Follow that with the removal of the tail cone assembly. And don't worry about scarring up the surface with a screwdriver and a hammer, because it doesn't get reused. Now there's a location on either end of the transfer case where you can insert a screwdriver and pry up on without damaging the mating surfaces. That way you don't end up with a leak down the road. And you might as well check the chain for any slack or any stretch. And if need be, replace it now. Now, while you got the case apart, make sure you take a look at the shift fork pads on both sides. If they're not in good condition, replace them. They're cheap. Otherwise, it could cause you popping out of gear and just headaches down the road. Now, you also need to take time to wipe off the magnet that sits in the transfer case. Remove any debris. You follow that with removal of the snap ring and the shift hub from the original main shaft. Now, certain model year transfer cases have bearings installed that need to be removed before reinstallation onto the new main shaft. To do that, we're using a large socket and the world's largest rubber mallet. And with that taken care of, you can reinstall the drive sprocket and hub assembly back onto the new, much larger main shaft. Follow that with the installation of the retaining snap ring. And just make sure it's fully seated before you move on. Now we've got all the gasket material scraped off both case halves, but before we reassemble everything, we want to make sure we clean out any debris that may have fallen down in there. Now to seal the two case halves, we're using Loctite 518 Gasket Eliminator Flange Sealant. And you don't need to go ape with it. It's a machine surface, and all you need is a light, continuous feed all the way around the edges to get the job done. With the case bolted together, you can install the snap ring that retains the oil oh. pump. Follow that with a speedometer drive gear, and then one more snap ring. After shifting the transfer case into four-wheel drive, you need to measure the shift rod stick-out length. If it's more than an inch, you need to trim it down, because the new tail housing only has a pocket depth of 1.125 inches. We use one-inch masking tape as a guide. Then, the job gets finished up by installing the new tail housing. And don't forget to put a little bit of lubrication on the output yoke seal. That'll prevent possible damage to the seal during first startup. We're installing our long arms and showing you why. And later, just one simple hand tool and two little inserts give you more tie rod ground clearance. Stay tuned.